welcome back to Rita Roo Kids. My name is Miss Christy, and today I'm so excited to read another awesome book with you. If you're as excited as I am, be sure to give this video a thumbs up below and don't forget to click subscribe. That way, every time we post a new story, you and I can read together again right away. All right, today's book is called The Story of Snow, The Science of Winter's Wonder by Mark Casino with John Nelson, PhD. Let's get started. The Story of Snow, The Science of Winter's Wonder by Mark Casino with John Nelson, PhD. Our story starts on a winter day, high up in the sky, in a cloud that is very, very cold. This is the story of snow. Clouds are mostly made of air, which we can't see. Then there is water vapor, water in the form of a gas, which we also can't see. We do see the billions of tiny droplets of liquid water and ice crystals that float in the cloud. They reflect light, making the clouds visible. Snow begins with a speck. Clouds are mostly made of air and water, but there are also bits of other things like tiny particles of dirt, ash, and salt. Even living bacteria can float in the wind and end up in a cloud. A snow crystal needs one of these specks to start growing. These specks are all much smaller than the eye can see. But if you could see them, this would be ash or soot from a volcano or fire. This might be a grain of pollen from a flower. This could be salt left over from ocean water that evaporates. This is a particle of soil. And this is bacteria from plant leaves. See, they're tiny, tiny. The speck becomes the center of a snow crystal. When a speck gets cold enough, water vapor will stick to it. If you had a microscope that could see such small things, here is what you would see. So it starts with this tiny, tiny speck like this. It says water vapor sticks to the cold speck, making the speck wet. Then more water vapor sticks to the wet speck, forming a water droplet. The droplet freezes into a ball of ice. More water vapor sticks to the ball of ice and it grows into a hexagon shaped ice crystal like that. Then water vapor continues to stick to the crystal. Faster growth on the corners causes six branches to sprout. See all the six different branches and they keep growing and growing. The branches keep growing, sprouting little arms of their own and a beautiful snow crystal is born. See, in groups of six. We're gonna learn more about that in a minute. These photographs of real snow crystals are shown much larger than their actual size. The crystals were collected during many different snowfalls. This is the actual size, see how small it is? But look, all the different snowfalls, they're so different. A snow crystal forms as it falls. As the snow crystal gets bigger and heavier, it starts to fall to earth. It keeps growing as it falls through its clouds, taking on its own special shape. The shape depends on how wet the cloud is and how cold it is. A snow crystal can start to grow one way, but then grow another way when it passes through a wetter or colder part of its cloud. The crystal stops growing soon after falling below the clouds. Snow crystals can be stars. One common snow crystal shape is the star. Star-shaped snow crystals usually have six arms reaching out from a center point. The center point is the home of the speck that started the crystal. The six arms look alike, but they are almost never exactly alike. So this would be where it looks like a star, see? And the arms are coming out straight like that. Parts of a snow crystal can break during the fall to earth, causing the arms to look different. Star-shaped snow crystals are called dendrites, which means tree-like. Oh, like the different branches on a tree. They form when a cloud is full of moisture 
and when the temperature hovers around 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, look. This is the simplest kind of plate crystal, a hexagon. Plates form when there's not enough moisture in the cloud for stars to form. And then, and when the temperature conditions are a few degrees warmer or colder than the temperature range that stars require. So this is a plate crystal. Snow crystals can be plates. Plate crystals are thin like star crystals, but they don't have arms. The simplest kind of plate is a hexagon with six straight sides. More complicated plates have points where arms almost grew. See the different points? Simple plate crystals are much smaller than stars. They can be as wide as one millimeter, but they're usually a lot smaller. This says actual size. See how small it is? The points on this plate crystal are the beginnings of arms that were just starting to develop when the crystal fell out of its cloud and stopped growing. Snow crystals can also be columns. Column-shaped snow crystals are shaped like pencils. They're not flat like stars and plates. Columns can form high in the clouds and at very cold temperatures. They are very tiny, and when they fall, they make for very slippery snow. A column has six sides. They are the three types. These are the three types. There's a solid column. These are the smallest. See how it's solid? Then there's a hollow column. These are longer and more common than solid columns. So they're longer and there's nothing on the inside. It's empty on the inside. And then there's a capped column. The caps on each end of these columns can be plate crystals or star crystals. Wow. Oh, look, here's one here. Capped columns like this one develop when a column crystal moves into a part of its cloud where the temperature is right for plates or stars to grow at the ends. The two end caps can grow to different sizes, as you can see here. It's bigger on this side and smaller on this side. Six is the magic number for snow crystals. We've heard six a lot, haven't we? This is because of the nature of water. Water molecules, the smallest units of water, attach themselves into groups of six, which usually leads to crystals with six arms or six sides. A perfect star or plate snow crystal has six fold symmetry. That means if you divided the crystal into six pie wedges, each pie wedge would have the same shape. So see, they divided it here like a pie. There's lines going through here. And that means that each one of these would look the same. Water molecules attach to each other in six-sided rings, like six kids holding hands. When many of these hexagonal rings are joined together, a larger hexagonal crystal is formed. So see, this would be like if you were standing here and holding hands, your hands would be at each corner. If you think of a star crystal as a clock, the arms of a star crystal can point to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 o'clock. Only those times. So see, this would be 12 o'clock here. And then two, four, six, eight, and 10 o'clock. If you thought about it like a clock. Snow crystals are rarely perfect. So much can happen during a snow crystal's fall to earth. It is rare that one will turn out perfectly. If a droplet of water passes close to one arm of a snow crystal, that arm can start to grow faster. Before long, that one arm will be a lot longer than the others. See, this one's a lot longer here. A snow crystal can be a twin. A snow crystal can have 12 arms. This is a twin crystal, which happens when two crystals start from the original speck and form on top of each other. A snow crystal can have bumps. If there are enough water droplets near the crystal, some can strike the crystal and freeze on contact. This gives the crystal little bumps called grime. Look, here's all the little bumps on this one. And this is where two attach to each other, so they end up with 12 arms because they're on top of one another. Many snow crystals make one snowflake. Often, snow crystals bump into each other and get stuck together. When this happens, snowflakes form. 
Hundreds or even thousands of snow crystals can be found in a single snowflake. Oh, wow. When they bump into each other, that's how they create a snowflake. Two snow crystals stuck together. So here you can see one, see the six arms? And then here's another one and it's stuck. Snowflakes we see falling from the sky are usually clumps of snow crystals like these. Individual crystals, which are sometimes also called snowflakes, can fall on their own, but they are much smaller and harder to see. So here's a bunch that all bumped into each other and that's what created a snowflake. Once a snow crystal lands, it starts to wither away. Snow crystals can't keep growing after they fall from the clouds. And when a crystal stops growing, it immediately starts to wither. Soon the arms of the crystal break down and the crystal shape becomes rounded. This means that if you want to see a snow crystal, you need to catch it in the air or find it very soon after it lands. See, so trying to catch it in the air. When they're not in the clouds surrounded by the water vapor they need to grow, snow crystals quickly start to erode. Try catching one on your sleeve or glove to see the crystal structure at its best. See it like this. If you catch one, you can see it before it starts to melt away or erode. Are no two snow crystals alike? Some simple plate crystals may appear exactly alike as seen through a high quality microscope. When it comes to more complicated snow crystals though, odds are that no two are exactly alike. But then no two leaves, flowers, or people are exactly alike either. Snow crystals are like us. We're each different, but we have a lot in common. I loved reading with you today and I hope that we can read together again soon. If you liked this book, don't forget to give it a thumbs up below and click subscribe. That way, every time we post a new story, you and I can read together again right away. If you'd like some activities to go along with our books, you can head over to readaroukids.com. There we do all kinds of fun things like arts and crafts and science experiments. Sometimes we work on our math skills and reading skills, and we even cook recipes together. If you'd like to find out what we're up to every day, you can always follow us on our social media. Again, I loved reading with you today, and I hope that we can read together again soon. Until then, Rita Roo loves you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.